Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about heme synthesis and disorders of heme synthesis, which are called as porphyrias. So heme synthesis occurs in the bone marrow, in the erythroid cells, where it is used to form hemoglobin. It also occurs in the liver, where it is used for synthesis of cytochromes, especially cytochrome P450 system, which is involved in drug metabolism. In the cells, it occurs in both mitochondria as well as in the cytosol. There are only three other, there are only three processes in the body which occur both in mitochondria and cytosol. How do we remember them? We use both arms to hug. So, heme synthesis, the urea cycle, gluconeogenesis, are the three processes which occur in the mitochondria as well as in the cytosol. So there are eight steps in the cycle and the first step and the last three steps are the ones which occur in the mitochondria whereas all the other steps occur in the cytoplasm. So to remember the intermediates of urea cycle, there's a very simple mnemonic. ALA placed in urine cup produces perfect heme. So the first intermediate is ALA or delta ALA, which stands for amino levulinic acid. So I said that only the first step and the last three steps occur in the mitochondria. All other steps occur in the cytosol. So, the second intermediate is porphobilinogen. Which forms uroporphyrinogen. Three, which then forms coproporphyrinogen three which will then form protoporphyrinogen nine which forms proto porphyrin nine which incorporates iron into the protoporphyrin ring to form heme. So these are the steps of the heme synthesis. Only the last three and the first one occur in the mitochondria whereas the others occur in the cytosol. So first step in heme synthesis has not been put here and that is the synthesis of delta amino levulinic acid. This occurs by condensation of succinyl-CoA with glycine in the presence of enzyme delta ALA synthase. This enzyme requires a cofactor which is pyridoxal phosphate. This is the rate limiting step in case of heme synthesis. The delta ALA formed here then enters the cytoplasm and two molecules of delta ALA condense to form porphobilinogen. This occurs in the presence of delta ALA dehydratase enzyme. It is a zinc containing enzyme and is inhibited by lead. 
four molecules of porphyrolanogen then condense to form uroporphyrinogen 3 this requires two enzymes uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase and uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase the second step this is a deamination reaction the next step is conversion of uroporphyrinogen 3 to coproporphyrinogen 3 this occurs via decarboxylation reaction by the presence of enzyme uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase then coproporphyrin now the cycle is entering the mitochondria and coproporphyrinogen 3 is converting to protoporphyrinogen 9 in the presence of enzyme coproporphyrinogen oxidase then another oxidation reaction protoporphyrinogen 9 is converted to protoporphyrin 9 in the presence of proto porphyrinogen oxidase to form protoporphyrin and then it incorporates the iron to form heme in the presence of ferrogenylase enzyme so these are the intermediates and the enzymes of urea cycle now we have to know the order of the intermediates and enzymes in urea cycle because then it becomes easier for us to remember the porphyrias which occur in that order if we go in the order of the enzymes it is very easy to remember the porphyrias so there is a simple mnemonic for porphyrias which is acp and the last three steps hvp so if there is deficiency of the respective enzyme then it causes the corresponding porphyria so A is for acute intermittent porphyria, which occurs in deficiency of uroporphyrinogen one synthase. Congenital erythropoietic porphyria is deficiency of uroporphyrinogen three co-synthase. Then we have porphyria cutanea tarda, which is the most common porphyria in adults, which is because of deficiency of enzyme uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. hereditary porphyria and variegate porphyria so hereditary hereditary uh, porphyria occurs because of coproporphyrinogen 3 oxidase deficiency whereas variegate porphyria occurs because of deficiency of protoporphyrinogen oxidase finally we have proto porphyria which occurs because of deficiency of ferrogenylase you have to remember that lead poisoning also affects heme synthesis because lead inhibits delta ale dehydrogenase because it is a zinc containing enzyme and ferrogenylase also because it competes with iron so these are the porphyrias these are the intermediates of the cycle ala placed in urine cup produces perfect heme acp hvp and these are the enzymes which are deficient so coming on to the disorders of heme synthesis quick recap of heme synthesis it occurs in both liver and in the bone marrow in the erythroid precursors it does not occur in mature rbcs because they do not contain mitochondria it requires both mitochondria and cytosol for synthesis and there are only three processes in the body that is heme synthesis urea cycle and gluconeogenesis which require uh, both mitochondria and cytosol there are eight steps in the process the first step and the last three steps occur in the mitochondria whereas the remaining steps occur in the cytosol so first is condensation of succinyl coa with glycine to form delta ala it occurs with the help of enzyme delta ala synthase which requires plp or pyridoxal phosphate this is the rate limiting step of heme synthesis this 
delta ALA enters the cytosol and two molecules of delta ALA condense to form porphobilinogen in the presence of enzyme delta ALA dehydratase. This enzyme is zinc containing and is inhibited by lead. Porphobilinogen uh, condenses four molecules of porphobilinogen condensed to form uroporphyrinogen 3 with the help of two enzymes, uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase and uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase. This is then converted to coproporphyrinogen 3 by a decarboxylation reaction. Another decarboxylation reaction converts coproporphyrinogen 3 to protoporphyrinogen 9. Now the cycle enters the mitochondria. Protoporphyrin 9 then is converted to protoporphyrin 9 which then incorporates iron into the structure to form heme with the help of ferrogelatase enzyme. So porphyria is the disorders of heme synthesis. They may be relapsing and remitting or they may follow a prolonged unremitting course. There are two major symptoms in porphyria. One is cutaneous photosensitivity and one is the neurovisceral symptoms. In cutaneous photosensitivity, there are two patterns that can occur. One is the blistering cutaneous photosensitivity and one is burning sensation. In photosensitivity, there may be skin erosions, bully, erythema and hyperpigmentation of the skin. It also becomes sensitive to damage from minimal trauma. Symptomatic treatment should be done and the patient should be told to put sunscreens. Venesection is useful in porphyrogetania tarda and in very severe cases, liver transplantation will be warranted. In case of erythropoietic protoporphyria, a famalinotide is recommended for prevention of cutaneous photosensitivity. Beta carotene in large amounts also helps in prevention of photosensitivity. Acute neurovisceral syndrome. It presents with pain abdomen, psychotic features, polyneuropathy and features of autonomic dysfunction. There may be insomnia, anxiety, restlessness, agitation, phobias, depression, apathy. Treated by IV glucose and IV heme because both of them inhibit the rate controlling step which is delta ALA synthase. Beta carotene and afa melanotide can be used for prevention of cutaneous photosensitivity. So I have already told you that there can be three, two forms of uh, porphyria presentation. It can be relapsing or remitting or it may follow a prolonged unremitting course. Triggering factors include drugs like anticonvulsants and sulfonamides. It may also be triggered by alcohol or fasting. So, the main porphyrias that we have to know are acute intermittent porphyria and porphyria cutinia tarda. Lead poisoning can inhibit two enzymes, perotulatase and ALA dehydratase, which may cause microcytic anemia, kidney disease and GI disease, and it can affect the nervous system. In children, lead poisoning can cause mental retardation, whereas in adults, demyelination and memory loss may occur. Acute intermittent porphyria is because of deficiency of uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase enzyme, also called as porphobilinogen deaminase. Five Ps are seen, painful abdomen, portwine urine, polyneuropathy, psychologic disturbances and precipitated by drugs, alcohol and starvation. So if you see, all of these are neurovisceral symptoms. In case of porphyria cutinia tarda, there is deficiency of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, which results in tea-colored urine because of uroporphyrins. There will be blistering cutaneous photosensitivity. Porphyria cutinia tarda is the most common porphyria in adults. So what were the other porphyrias that we talked about? We said ACP, HVP. The first three occur in the cytosol processes and these three occur in the last three steps of the cycle in the 
which take place in the mitochondria. Acute intermittent porphyria is because of neuroporphyrinogen 1 synthase. Five Ps are seen and there will be only neurovisceral symptoms. CEP, congenital erythropoietic porphyria, because of neuroporphyrinogen 3 synthase deficiency. In this, there will be cutaneous photosensitivity. Porphyria cutanea tarda shows blistering cutaneous photosensitivity because of deficiency of decarboxylase enzyme. Hereditary coproporphyria and variegate porphyria. Both of them show neurovisceral as well as cutaneous photosensitivity symptoms. And finally, we have protoporphyria or erythropoietic protoporphyria, which is because of inhibition of ferrocialities enzyme. In this, there will be only cutaneous photosensitivity, sensitivity, which is burning type. To prevent this, we can give increased beta carotene and a melanocyte. So this finishes heme synthesis and porphyrias. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this.